Hello everyone, on today's episode of the One Year Life Transformation Challenge, we're going to talk about the controversial subject of psychedelics. Controversial today, we're going to talk about psychedelics, which shouldn't be. However, we're going to delve into what psychedelics are. I'm going to talk about some of my personal experiences, and then we're going to talk about the actual psychedelics that have been used by shamans, spiritual guides, and by modern people like Timothy Leary to explore different states of consciousness. So we're going to do this without judgment, and um, for a lot of people, this is going to be very new information. Uh, in fact, for the majority of the population, the information about psychedelics has been hidden, manipulated by great people like Richard Nixon, and today we're going to undo some of the myths and just really look at what serves us and what doesn't serve us. So as always, I'm going to begin with a quote on the subject, and that quote is, Psychedelics are illegal, not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. Terence McKenna. Terence McKenna was a scientist, a guy who experimented with life and understanding consciousness, a brilliant guy, and used psychedelics to reach different levels of understanding, passed that understanding on to millions of people, so I'm eternally grateful for the great Terence McKenna. Now, I'm going to start with a disclaimer today. Some people won't like this video. Now, drugs, psychedelics, all these things have been put into a single basket and the government has labeled it as bad. Cultural conditions have accelerated that. Your parents have been labeled that. And I understand there's a lot of heavy psychic energy around the word drugs. Totally get it. What I'm going to ask you to do is take any of your preconceived opinions about drugs, just for a minute, and just put them over here. Put them in a box. You can go get them in a sec, but we'll just lock them up in a box over here, and we're going to start fresh. And we're going to get a new understanding. At the end of the video, if you want to go back to your box and grab it and get your beliefs back out and just load them back up, boot them back up, and go back to that, that's fine. But for now, over there, and we're going to start fresh. So what is a drug? A drug is any external molecule that you ingest through intravenous or orally or any other way that changes your state. That's it. Therefore, the definition of drugs is much wider than you may realize. Food, food is a drug. Sugar is the most addictive drug that um, is readily available to people. In fact, a lot of scientists have linked sugar to a higher addiction rate than cocaine. So when you hear drugs, and drugs are bad, okay, as the South Park teacher used to say, what are we talking about? Like, let's really get clear. If we're going to label something as bad, let's find out what it is before we can start labeling it and just putting generalizations on it. So drugs, then, you know, we've got food, which is a huge drug and causes more problems, more heart disease and more coronary deaths are caused by food drugs than any other drug. Then we have the other drugs, which are the okay drugs, the prescription drugs, which once again kill more people than the illicit drug on the planet. Things like Oxycontin, which is more um, addictive than heroin. Um, Xanax, which is more addictive than most you know, illicit drugs, are the second group of drugs. So the government sort of says they're okay. So food drugs are okay, even though they, a lot of them cause obesity and death. Prescription drugs are okay because we, you know, because even though they kill people and they cause addiction, they're still okay. And then there's illicit drugs, the bad drugs, the ones we said you can't have. Now, interestingly, when we look at those three groups, food, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, and illicit drugs, the two that are approved by the government, bon, number one, food, and number two, um, medical drugs, are taxed and are huge revenue sources for the government. What's the one untaxed area? Illicit drugs. Very interesting how a government that's totally run by its budget, because that's what governments are there to do, is to run a budget, they're not there to tell you how to live your lives, they're there to maintain a budget, are so anti that things don't give them tax dollars. So quite often I wonder if it's our health or our tax dollars or the tax money which is the main impotence. But, you know, I'll let you make up your own mind. So during the 1960s we had this incredible shift in consciousness where people were just fed up with the deaths of World War One, the murdering of human beings, World War Two, where we were throwing people into gas chambers and murdering them. In the 60s it was just this counter revolution, you know, Woodstock, free love, embracing your true self, loving others without judgment. It was incredible and San Francisco was the epicenter for that. Now during that period there was a guy called Timothy Leary who was um, at the forefront of LSD development. And Timothy Leary coined the term, the, the term 
Turn on, tune in, and drop out. And he wrote entire essays about how to reach your true self through LSD, which LSD is an, incre- is a, is a, is an incredible psychedelic, which really is like a warp, warp drive on the back that takes you directly to um, outer space and your true self. Now, during that interesting period of time where America was changing very, very quickly, in fact, the globe was changing very, very quickly, whenever there is a force, there's always a counterforce. That's how the universe works. And... Unfortunately, the counterforce was an incredibly intelligent man. His name was Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, which was who was one of the greatest political animals that ever existed, had some real challenges in the 1960s. He was illegally bombing and murdering people in Cambodia. He was accelerating quickly the Vietnam War, which was an unjust war in which he was murdering Vietnamese, dropping napalm on them, melting their skin from their bone. And obviously, to keep this sort of junk up, he needed to be quite smart because no one, especially in retrospect, believes that that was the right thing to do until they were lied to. Now, during this period, we had a thing called Watergate, which um, found out Richard Nixon. There was these personal audio tapes from the um, meetings and conferences that he had had in his um, Oval Office. He'd recorded them all. After recording them all, he realized that he was probably not a good dude, and he paid some of his, well, okay, I'll stick to the facts. Somehow, within his own party, people under their own intuition without any direction from Richard Nixon of course went into the Democratic Republican Party sorry Democratic Party um, headquarters stole the tapes now interestingly the stealing of those tapes was quite good for Richard Nixon because what was later to be found when some of those other tapes were requested was that Richard Nixon had started a plan of discriminating against drugs ingeniously during a conversation that I've heard is recorded and available on the internet he was talking to his Secretary of Defense Mr. Richard Kissinger who was a very, very smart guy. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a brief snapshot of the, um, of the conversation. It went something like this. Kissinger, you know, you know the problem we have right now? And Kissinger, I don't know, sir, it's the unpopular war in Vietnam is probably our number one problem. No, Kissinger, it's not the war, it's the people who are against the war. Very good point, Mr. President. You know who those people are? And Kissinger goes, the, the American public? And then Nixon was like, no, it's the Jews, it's the blacks, and it's the hippies. And Kissinger, who was a Jew, probably was thinking, this guy's nuts, but, you know, he's the president, so he's like, oh, okay, Mr. President, so, so what does this mean to you? And he goes, to stop the protests, we go after the Jews, the hippies, and the blacks. And you know what's the same about all those Jews, hippies, and blacks? What is the same about all those people, Mr. President? They do marijuana. They do drugs, they do marijuana. So if we crack down on marijuana, we go to the protests, and we make sure we have the strictest drug laws in the world, we can... We can arrest these protesters, problem solved. With great power comes great corruption. So, and you know, with uh, total power comes total corruption. Richard Nixon was um, just a vehicle of repeating patterns that we've seen through history exhibiting that. As a person, he was a divine entity. However, he allowed those repeating patterns to manifest through him, imprisoned millions of people over using psychedelics, and ultimately put them in prison, destroyed their lives in order to keep unpopular wars going. Now, these things that happened obviously really stop the counterculture in its tracks. It's hard to be a hippie when you're in jail. It's hard to be, you know, a. Uh, it's hard to fight for freedom when you're um, locked in a cell. So ultimately, that counterculture was stopped, and um, some of the most important substances that were developed in that period were not given to the to the public. So I'm going to stop right now and play a short video on one of those substances known as MDMA. And I'm going to, once again, leave that box over there. Don't get your key. Just watch this video and start to understand what some of these devices can do. You can see in that woman's heart that she has had a manifest change in her happiness and everything about her has changed. Now, I've seen these videos thousands of times. So for me, that was just a recent one that I decided to play. I want to go through these illicit drugs. And once again, disclaimer, I'm not telling you to do any of these things. I'm giving you the information necessary to maybe change that lockbox over there, which was manipulated by people like Richard Nixon. And I want to talk to you about what those things do. So you have better information. So the first one I talk to you, want to talk to you about is the incredible, amazing substance known as DMT. So I think it's dimethylene tryptamine is the um, chemical name, better known by the Amazonian rainforest tribes as ayahuasca. Now, ayahuasca is slightly different to DMT, but um, for, for, um, uh, for, for the shortness of this video, we'll simply combine those things. 
So what does DMT or ayahuasca do? Well, in a ceremonial context or a lab context, because this has been replicated in the lab, DMT breaks down your dissolved ego, yourself, and releases your true essence in order to have what seems to be, for almost everyone who does it, a conversation with God. Pretty cool, right? The, uh, the um, South Americans call that Mother Ayahuasca. They don't necessarily refer it to God, they call it Mother Ayahuasca. And participants who undertake these ceremonies go to th about three or four hours of basically the most intense mind trip you can imagine. There's a purging at the start, which isn't too nice. You might vomit or, you know, worse. But once you've done the purging of your negative emotions, you just reach source and have a conversation with God. Now, that's what that drug does. And if you research it, you'll see what it does. Now, whether it's good for you or bad for you, I mean, the, um, the literature is you know, all over the place, but ultimately thousands and soon to be millions because the popularity of this drug is increasing to tourism to South America is increasing just because of it, has changed the lives of millions of people. And that's what I believe you should look at. When you're looking at danger thresholds, ratios, or toxicity ratios, if the benefit is a conversation with God that will change your life, but you could get sick, you just need to weigh those things up. You could get sick eating a donut. It doesn't necessarily bring you any closer to God. So DMT is incredibly powerful. And when this video is played in 50 years, if it still exists, people will laugh that I'm talking from a context that DMT was even banned. That I, and I can guarantee you that. We can't keep this stuff under wraps much longer. The second psychedelic I want to talk to you about is not a traditional psychedelic, however, um, it's become very popular, which is MDMA. MDMA is the active format or the true chemical behind ecstasy. When you hear the word ecstasy, ecstasy is, is a word, it's, a, it's, it's an emotion, and the tablets of ecstasy are generally combined with a few drugs, and sometimes, unfortunately, that's what causes problems, is the combination of drugs. But in its pure form, it's known as MDMA. It releases large amounts of serotonin, allows you to connect, bond, and as in the video we saw, create real breakthroughs through love and understanding. MDMA was initially created, um, I think, in the 20s, but in the 50s and 60s, it was used by psychologists in order through couples couples counseling those couples were given mdma so they just stopped thinking about the the problems of the past came into the moment and made incredible breakthroughs in their relationships which still lasted today ultimately some of those psychiatrists abused the drug sold the drug and it was banned by the government because no government wants loving individuals connecting on a basis of pure love and self it can be very bad for business the third drug i want to talk to you about is psilocybin Psilocybin has been experimented with now to s cure post-traumatic stress disorder, which many people thought couldn't be cured. It's otherwise known as magic mushrooms. It's nature's way of taking you to God. It's the, think about this, why would nature create a mushroom that when ingested by a human helps them understand reality? There's a reason for this. Nature, you know, everything has a purpose and a reason. And when we say these things are bad, well, I don't know, you know, I don't think the universe does anything bad. I think humans do bad things. Psilocybin, very similar to DMT or LSD, will take you to a place in which you will see reality very differently and make different decisions on how reality is actually formed. Something very incredible in your life. The fourth psychedelic is LSD. LSD is a man-made lab um, chemical, but if it's man-made, sometimes it has a natural format, a natural basis, because man looked for it. And once it was created, it was hailed as a wonder drug that cured basically so many psychiatric diseases and helped people reconnect with their lives and nature. Unfortunately, people like Richard Nixon decided to ban the drug and ultimately the counter-revolution that was sort of stimulated by LSD stopped as well. Research into LSD, in fact, the creator of LSD took microdoses of LSD every single day of his life, and I believe he lived to about 80, had quite a good, good time as well doing that. So if you created LSD, knew its compounds, knew its downsides, and took it every single day, that means that there must be um, something about it. And finally, something that most people don't consider a psychedelic, but when used properly can, is obviously cannabis. So cannabis is the um, number one recreational um, illicit drug in the world and it's only illicit because governments say so. I mean, we were using it legally and growing paper and trees with it, you know, for um, thousands of years before governments got involved, is a plant, a spirit plant that can take you to places to understand the world. Unfortunately, it's not really used like that. You know, there is um, habitual nature to the use and people quite often just use it to zone out, like alcohol, for example. And ultimately, um, it can be much more powerful than that. So. The box is still over here, you've still got the key, I'll lay it again in a sec, but what I want you to think about is how you see the world. These drugs that are bad 
are they bad? Are they as bad as food? Are they as bad as cigarette smoking? Are they as bad as alcohol? Well, science says no, but the, the box over here that a lot of people have says yes. Now, maybe it's time to push that box out of the way and create a new belief system that serves you. The Buddha was all about direct experience. If someone told you that psychedelics were bad and they were no good for you, the Buddha would say that was a thought concept. And ultimately, if you would like to experience these things, do your research, get the literature, and do it safely, and understand the results. They can be very, very profound. If, you're, if the box is too scary, stick in your box and don't do them. The choice is yours. However, don't let people like Richard Nixon or government tell you how to live your life. Make decisions that serve you through experience. Hope you, on, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that that box has gone over there and you're ready to start a brand new box with much more possibilities. Until tomorrow, I'll see you then. Bye.